this is DJ, the Prodigy Pen, and you're listening to the Ringside Report. Hey, this is Kay Velasquez, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Chuck Liddell, and you're listening to the Ringside Report. Hi, he's Wendell Lee, the ex-murder of Silver, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Tito Ortiz, the People's Champ, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Uriah Faber, the California Kid, and you're listening to the Ringside Report. This is Randy, the Natural Couture, and you're listening to the Ringside Report. Hi, this is Vito Belfer, and you're listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Chay Sun, and you are listening to Ringside Report Radio. This is Jacques Fabian, and welcome to Ringside Report Radio. Hope you're ready for the next episode. Hey, hey, hey. All right, welcome to Ringside Report Radio. I am Dave Simon. Fred Garcia is here with me. And Anthony D'Alessio is here as well. Just causing all sorts of trouble around here. Before the show goes on the air, we are here to talk mixed martial arts as we are every Friday night. Here on TSN 690, we've got some uh, TKO that went down in Quebec City tonight. Invicta FC doing a show as well. You know, the world of MMA is vast. It's not just the UFC. You've got all sorts of promotions out there. Like Bellator did a big show last weekend with Fyodor Emelianenko victorious in the main event. Bellator doing another big show next weekend as they will wrap up the opening round of their heavyweight tournament. It will be Ryan Bader taking on Mohamed King Mo Lawal next Saturday night at Bellator 199. Now, interestingly here, UFC 224 in Brazil is also next Saturday night. So, what are we going to watch? I mean, obviously we're going to watch both, but... What do you think the majority of people are going to tune into? The free show from Bellator, Ryan Bader, King Mo, decent main event. Or are they going to tune into the pay-per-view that you have to buy featuring Amanda Nunez against Raquel Pennington in the main event? Now, they've got some good fights on that card. You've got Vitor Belfort against Lyoto Machida. But Bellator has Paul Daly against John Fitch in their co-main event. And it's free. So a strong move, I think, by Bellator next week going up against UFC 224. I think it might hurt the UFC's pay-per-view number for fight fans that just want to watch a fight on a Saturday night. They may opt for Bellator, even though I think the UFC is offering a stronger product overall. Bellator's doing some things. It was a fun card last weekend, and I think it'll be another fun card next weekend. Probably smart to go against the pay-per-view. Remember a couple of years ago when Affliction did their first pay-per-view and the UFC offered on free TV Anderson Silva against, was it James Irwin? What was his yeah, name? Yeah, James Irvin. Irvin. Yeah, so, and Anderson's first jump up to uh, to light heavyweight. Yeah, exactly. So that was a free fight against the pay-per-view from Affliction, and from there... You know, they, they hurt Affliction right away because the pay-per-view sells. I think that pay-per-view, pay-per-view was uh, Tim Sylvia against Fedor Emelianenko. Yeah. So having uh, Anderson Silva on free TV hurt the pay-per-view. Can Bellator do the same thing right now? Look, it was last week was like an exciting show. Bellator really proved that they're coming uh, to growth. I mean, it was, the like I said last week, it's the beginning of Bellator's new new future it was exciting the whole venue was like awesome the way they introduced the fighters i mean there was so much entertainment yeah it was awesome and and the venue that i was at okay there was a hockey game going on and there was some football game going on whatever i have no idea but in the end the venue turned all the televisions towards bellator everybody was watching the fight it was exciting from the beginning um and just like it was just entertainment they, they're able to bring out a better product in a sense. I mean, the weigh-ins is something Better product than, than what? Better than, than hockey games no, or than the UFC? No, better than the UFC right now. Better no, than I don't UFC. think so. Better Overall, in the sense the entertainment part. 
they've it was like really the it entertainment was some, part. I mean, look, it was, it, was a show. Gr- it was a great main event but let's not forget it's two guys over 40 is frank Mir over 40 yeah he's, oh, no, he's 38 no, no, he's 38, no, 38. anyways yeah. he's close to there you know it's two guys that are at the end of their careers yeah then <laughs> the other fights great performance by dylan dennis but come on it's his first fight. He fought a, a no name uh, jabroni. Not, not mm-hmm. really. He I wasn't mean, a no name. He was a, yeah, he's he a was. pretty good, well. He's a good. He's a he's, he's a good. Not, he's not he's a good grappler. That, and he is, and it is was he? his first fight. Is he? Is he? Well, he was good enough up to the toehold. But other than that, I mean, <laughs> good know. enough up to the toehold. <laughs> but it was Dennis's first fight. Anthony, and Alicia, let me ask you a question. Yeah. What was the guy's name? Let me check. No, 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 no. No, see, don't let me you check. See, there, Tell no, me. You're like, me oh, check. he fought a good guy. He fought a good guy. What was his name? Kyle let me Walker. check. Yeah. Skywalker. Well, you know what his professional record was? I'll tell you. Two and four. Yeah, he but it's Dennis' fight. first fight, man. Yeah, Come but on. it was designed for exactly, him to win. Exactly, but don't tell me that. It was designed to win, though. It yeah, wasn't of designed course. To win. It was designed for Dylan Dennis to win. When you're going up against a two-win and three-loss fighter, a fighter with a losing record does not deserve a spot on the main card of a, a Bellator event against a world-class grappler like Dylan Dennis. This was a guy that was outmatched and got tapped out. This was the outcome. That was obvious before the fight even began, which is why Dennis was such a huge favorite going in. And I'm just saying they're not going to take over the UFC because let's look at this next UFC fight card. All the fights, you know, Vitor against Lyoto, guys that we know, Lineker against Kelleher. Okay, I don't know much of Kelleher, but mm. Lineker's a legit fighter. You know, every fight on the UFC card is a legit fight. I'm just saying Bellator did a great show last week. Props to them. And but, it was exciting, the, right? You oh, were it was watching excellent. it. Right. It but was let's an exciting not act fight. as if they're going to take over. I'm not the saying UFC. they're going to take over, but and you're making at, a pretty good product here. If you look excellent. at this, this UFC card next weekend, okay, Bellator's doing Ryan Bader versus King Mo in their main event. Yeah, that's okay. Their co main event's Paul Daly and John Fitch. That's good. That, that's all right. That's decent, yeah. but they're not in their prime anymore. You know, Bader's, I think, still in his prime. King Mo may be dipping. Out of it at this point? Never was it. Uh, yeah, it's hard much. to tell with King Mo. But you compare that to the UFC card, okay? You have Amanda Nunez, Raquel Pennington on top for the Bantamweight Championship of the World. You've got Jacare against Calvin Gastelum. Yeah, that I want to see. Jacare, Calvin Gastelum alone beats any fight on that Bellator card. And then you add in Mackenzie Dern, your girl, right? You love Mackenzie hey, Dern, Anthony. Did I tell you she's going to be the future? Well, yes, you did. And I, I, she's fighting at the UFC card next weekend, not Bellator. And she takes on Amanda Cooper. Then you have John Lineker on the card. And Vitor and Lyoto rounds out the pay-per-view. Yeah. Top to bottom, it is a far more solid card than Bellator. Yeah, I agree with right? you. The uh, UFC still card. has the depth of talent that Bellator cannot compete with. They can't. Right. On this card, you're absolutely right. But last week's card, Overall, with Fedor, roster. you yeah. know... Um, it was a different story. It was a great card. It was exciting, and I think it was a good opportunity for Bellator to, to to get new viewership. It was like for people that didn't know much about Bellator and only knows about the UFC. And there's other organizations out there like tonight. TKO was uh, here in Montreal. There's amazing fighters out there, and Bellator was able to bring a lot more power to them. Like overall, I, I was like excited, man. As a jujitsu guy, man, it was like. Four out well, of five yeah. fights. They were all submission fights. They were like, it was awesome. Wait, but man. you're not bragging about your predictions, though. I think we should go. No, back wait. To I last am. Week. I was holding yeah. that up. We, we should go back to last I know. week. I even because got a text from Wally there. Like, Anthony, yeah, you were saying very strongly last week. Yeah, of I course. Know. Of course, Frank Mir was going to win. You were going against Fedor. You didn't Who? believe what? in Picking Fedor. The jiu-jitsu yeah, right. Guy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Picking yeah. the jujitsu guy. I, I kept typical. putting so many hashtags. Anthony. I told you so. You know. Yeah. See, you thought. That Fedor would lose, and yeah. Fred and I were here <laughs> telling you that... What are you laughing about? Yeah. Fred and I were here telling you that Fedor was obviously going to win, and you yeah. you denied it. You were firmly in the Frank Mir camp. Oh, yeah. That's and right. what? You don't Thank want, God for I knew, podcasts. See, I knew you Ringside wouldn't admit Report. it. See, Go on last week's show and let me hear these two guys lose again. I'm right. Well, Dave has it, I think. Yeah, I have the audio if you want, Anthony. Oh, yeah. Would you doctor it or something? To prove oh, I gotta hear this. that you're lying here once again. Let's hear it. Listen to you from last week, Anthony, picking Frank Mir as you always do. This is, this is, 
Frank Mir looks great. He's like he's oh. like the best weight he's ever been in. He looks solid. He looks very confident. It's Frank Mir. You know that when he comes to fight, he comes to like fight and destroy. <laughs> Talk I mean, about doctor. He's taking news, out man. you know Brock. You know he's taking out like Nogueira. Remember the the arm snap? I mean this guy is is the deal. No, Anthony, I think you're wrong. Fedor will win by TKO at 48 yep. seconds. In the very first round. Fedor still has a good fight in him. Anthony, come on. Yeah, Anthony. Why are you always doubting Fedor? Whoa, man. Like, seriously, oh, guys? Oh, what oh, a oh. massacre on Fedor. See, Anthony? That's you from last week. Oh, my God. You guys are horrible. You could get me arrested. <laughs> I can't believe this. Unbelievable. Talk about Anthony. hashtag fake news, man. This I is it. I, I've heard it all. I don't I've know heard what... it all. I can't believe you guys. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Fred and I were right again, right, Fred? Yeah. High five, Fred. Let's do <laughs> yeah. it. Boom. <laughs> Muscles, Marco, who was who was right? There you go, my friend. Listen, insidereport.net, get not, the full podcast. Did you not hear the audio? Yeah, you should listen <laughs> yeah. to the podcast. Full I, podcast. I recommend that. Ringsidereport.net. Go listen to the podcast from last week and hear how Fred and I, once again, correct. Yeah, right. Anthony, so, did you not hear yourself yeah, talking let, about Frank Mir? Let me remind you about Ron Rousey. Fedor, Why do you, Mackenzie Dern. All the great fighters that I predict are victorious. Yeah, yeah, go yeah. on. <laughs> Where's Wally? Get Wally to send like uh, some like Twitter message right now because he knows the truth. Oh, man, the truth Arlen is Arlen knows there. the truth. You're really starting to seem like a real conspiracy theorist hey, listen, there, Anthony. You know what I think? I said it from like last week. I think Fedor is going to end up winning this whole like – like, uh, you might be right. I, I, I'll tell you what, he's getting to the finals. I'm convinced Thank he's you, getting Fred. to the finals. Don't doctor this. He Dave. beats Chael Sonnen. <laughs> I think he's going to beat Chael, too. Yeah. The size is too much in Fedor's oh, power. You're on my bandwagon. He's still got the power. He's knock out Chael. Yeah. I didn't think he'd beat hey. Frank Mir. Well, no, I did think he'd beat Frank Mir, yeah, obviously. Yeah. I predicted it. Okay. <laughs> so did I. Yeah, yeah so I did Fred. Sure did. But I think he's also going to beat Chael Sonnen next week. Or next, uh, in not July. next week. It's about in July. July. Is yeah, that what it is? that's what they're looking at is in July. Yeah. You know what? I've he's got, actually uh, a pretty Fedor. big guy. Chael is bigger than Fedor. But, but. No, he's not. Yeah, he, no, I, he's, he's not. He looks bigger than Fedor. Weight-wise, like, he's not. Chael oh, Sonnen is Fedor a, weighed at 240. Yeah. Yeah, and Chael Sonnen is around there, man. No. He's he's hanging up there. He Chael Sonnen is a middleweight, and Fedor is one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Yeah, but he's a very light, the lightest of the heavyweights. So no, I'm going with the Fedor. Oh when yeah, they I'm do going for off. Fedor. But that's the... but I think the finals are going to be rough for Fedor because it's either going to be Matt Mitrione or the winner of Bader and King Mo. Yeah, I don't think King Mo's going anywhere. I think anyways. Bader is going to win and... the fight next weekend, and I think Bader and Mitrione will be interesting. I could see that one going either way, but whoever wins that fight, I think beats Fedor. I'll tell you what, Chael Sonnen weighed in at 222 against. Rampage Jackson. So there that's you go. A, a good 20 pounds under Fedor. Fedor. Yeah, but that's at weigh-in, right? So you're looking, let's smack yeah, it up Yeah, but he's a heavyweight. He doesn't, no, he yeah. doesn't need to Why are you weight. smacking it up 10 pounds? He, he could go up a lot of to Burger 265. King, my a lot of Burger Makes King. Makes no sense, man. Why would you eat a bunch of Burger King after They're you weigh sponsored, in? they sponsored, man. Oh, you after the, you're talking after the weigh-in. Oh, sorry, I'll take that back. I'm but I mean, he's, the he's a heavyweight. He's not cutting weight. He's 222. Why would he cut weight? He has. He could go up all the yeah. way to two sixty five. Exactly. Mm. What is Frank Anthony Mir, talking Frank, about? Frank Mir cut. Fred, Frank Fred, Mir cut like about twenty something pounds. About. Come on, best best shape hey, ever. We but told you, Frank Mir hey, looked listen, awful. We it. told you it. last week. Yeah. Mm. Frank Mir can't take a punch no more. We told you last week. We told yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, I Frank Mir <laughs> got knocked out like three times against Maldonado, didn't he? No, that was Fedor. Oh, that was Fedor. No, uh, but yeah. I think, you know, I was happy to see Fedor win. It was very cool to see him back with a big win against a big name on a big stage for Bellator. It made people feel like it was the old times again. And I think Fedor has a good chance to beat Chael because Chael is also a guy who's past his prime. But, but I, right, Anthony, I know you are you can agree with me here that uh, Let's hear this. Fedor probably doesn't make it. In the finals, like he no, doesn't. No, I don't agree uh, with you at all. I think you he's think he could beat Bader. Yeah, for or sure. He beats Mitrione. Bader. Yeah. He beats Bader. Yeah, he beats Bader, and, and he beats Mitrione. Oh, I got Fedor winning. He didn't all beat this. Mitrione last time. No, you guys remember what out. happened? It's gonna be a revenge. He got knocked. It's gonna be a revenge. You're right. Fedor's back. Are Listen, he cracked a smile too. Did you see Fedor cracking a smile? That was a miracle in itself. I mean, FBI's on him. He doesn't care. 
You know what I was surprised was Chael's comment. Bring the heat. Did you hear Chael's comment? Uh, that Chael, was pretty nasty. Chael's comment where he said that it's hard to study tape on Fedor because all his fights in Japan were fake. <laughs> yeah, that one. And the one when he got into the ring and he says, um, not only do I hate like Chicago more than standing in the same ring with Fedor. Yeah, but that, that was, was all for show. Yeah, but... And then he shook Fedor's hand and like hugged him. I mean, yeah. The, well, there was I, no, I don't want him to shake no Fedor's hand after that. I want to give him the double birds. You <laughs> flip Fedor off. No, but the Diaz stuff. No one ever does that to Fedor. And that's what's interesting about Chael. And that's what we like about this matchup is that Chael is a guy who talks a lot of trash and will not show respect to Fedor Emelianenko, no. and he... But it won't affect and look, Fedor. Well, Fedor no. probably doesn't even understand That's what, what I was Chael just says. about to say. He You're under, right. <laughs> okay, listen. A, he understands exactly what Chael says. And B, when is the last time Fedor fought a guy who didn't show him the utmost respect? True. You're right. Ever? Has it ever happened? Have we ever seen a guy fight Fedor who yeah, but didn't show him super respect before the fight? It's kind of like when Anderson Silva fought Nick Diaz. Everybody that fought Anderson up until that point was like very respectful of Anderson. Right. Even Chris Weidman, the first time and the second time after he beat him, was like, you know, Anderson, you're the greatest, you know, you're the man. Yeah, very respectful. Hero, Nick Diaz, he was pretty respectful before the fight when he got in there, not so respectful. And Anderson, you know, didn't seem like he knew how to react to that. Cheo and Fedor, it could be some trash talking. Oh. It could be interesting. I think Fedor will deal with it how he deals with everything, stone-faced, and he won't sell it. But it's it's a cool juxtaposition of, of characters here with Fedor, who's very calm and very quiet, and Cheo, who's very loud and in the face of whoever is across the octagon from him. Yeah, or the, well, I think, the circle cage in Bellator. I, I think you said it right when Fedor saying Fedor's going to stay quiet because Fedor's not going to react. I would be extremely surprised if Fedor were to do something like Anderson Silva. Was it like a, a shoulder hit he tried to do to Chael at the weigh-in? Yeah, well, it's not going to so, be like Anderson and Chael because that yeah, was exactly. real beef. So, they yeah. really didn't like each so, other. So I really doubt that Chael gets under Fedor's skin. Fedor is going to perform whether Chael trash talks or not. It's going to be the same Fedor. Yeah, he goes to affect business, him for yeah. sure. But it was Should. nice to see him smile for once. Should be good. And it's got us talking about Bellator, right? Is this the biggest fight in Bellator history, yeah. Chael versus Fedor? I, I, I'm the not biggest, sure. Why. I think it's going to be a good um, uh, What's a bigger? to Frank Mir. I mean, people are going to be wanting to watch Fedor now, for sure. Uh, what? That's what I said. I said Bell this is Bellator's Kimbo best Kimbo Dada. Da. Yeah, okay. Yeah, where one, yeah, they both almost But died, really, you, you look know? at the history of Bellator, I don't know if they've had a bigger fight than this. I don't think so. I think like just viewership. I think it really helped Bellator. I think Bellator is on the good track, um, and they're bringing in some like exciting fighters. I mean, like look at the guys that were there, like Rafael Lovato Jr. That was an awesome fight. Mm -hmm. That armbar was like probably one of the best armbars. I mean, that's a masterpiece right there. You want to see how an armbar is performed in MMA? That's it. You take a look at that, and you can't get any better than that. That was amazing. Um, you know, uh, Gracie. The Gracie fight was awesome. You know, yeah, his stand up wasn't as great, but in the end. He finished the Gracie style, and he's yeah. he put the Gracie name back up on, on the map. But it that's was Bellator. kind of designed for those people to win that night oh. because they're inexperienced in MMA, and you want to give them a few fights and get them going. Yeah, for sure. But in the end, it's still a fight, right? Anything could happen, just like Federer losing. I mean, like at certain points in his career, anything could happen in a fight. A guy's not going into the fight to say, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to be just like the guinea pig to this guy's career. No, I'm going in there to knock this guy out. And I want the money. I want the fame. No one's going in there because it's like like Sunday dinner, man. They're going there to eat the turkey up. So, so what do you think of Dylan Dennis calling out Ben Askren? Because at the beginning, I was like, yeah, I kind of liked it. But after that, Dave brought me back to reality. Saying what? like, Come what on, say? Dylan Dennis cannot go from fighting a guy that's two and five to... Yeah. It makes like, no sense. Yeah. Dylan Dennis... What, know your role. Yeah, he's calling out everybody. He's talking a gang of trash right now. He's 1-0 in MMA. He needs to relax. He would get smashed by Ben Askren. He would get smashed by Rory McDonald. He would get smashed by John Fitch and Paul Daly, probably. Dylan Dennis is not ready for that stuff. He's talking out of his league right now. And that's cool. If he wants to do that, hey, his buddy Conor McGregor I made a career about, out of doing that. that. The problem is 
McGregor had the skills to back it up. And Dylan Dennis, as nice as that guard pull and whatever was, it's not enough. It's for not a, it's we'll not see. enough for that upper echelon. He's not ready Listen, for that. Look, he's not ready for Rory McDonald. No, he's probably not ready for Rory, Rory McDonald yet. would destroy him. What? Well, yes, come on. I, I agree. I think Rory come is. On. I think Rory, Rory's destroy a better Rory than decision? ever. Destroy him by knockout. I think. Hey, I think wait. he would knock him out very severely, like yeah. in the first round. Let's, let's Are you look. kidding me? Dylan Dennis does not have the stand up. It's his first fight, man. Well, yeah, that's what but I'm it, saying. And stand up was so him bad. talking to Ben Askren or whatever. I don't want to see Ben Askren against Dylan Dennis. I want to see Ben Askren against Rory McDonald. How that's about- the Bellator welterweight fight I want to see. I agree on that. Let's go, Scott Coker. Make it uh, happen, please. I'd rather see Name and Gracie against like Dills, Dills Dan on that one on the next card. Yeah, that, sure, that would be something sure. interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, Thank, yeah. You. Thank you. Did you see Fedor was interviewed by the FBI about his ties to uh, Michael Cohen? Michael Cohen is that lawyer who apparently what the heck is that? He oh, come on, man, you don't follow anything? No, man. I Michael Cohen the is the lawyer to. who apparently paid money to the uh, porn star Stormy Daniels. Say what? You know Donald Trump? You know the president of the United States? You're aware he's the president? Yes, sir. Okay, so Donald Trump, talk is, show guy, Donald Trump is the president of the United States. Right. Okay? He, the talk show guy. That's Help cool. create jobs. Yeah, <laughs> help create jobs. <laughs> okay, let's stay out of that one. But, so he's the president, and uh, allegedly he had an affair with a, a porn actress. And, Sounds good. And this porn actress was paid money to keep quiet about this alleged affair. All right. It's getting good. Go now, ahead. this guy, Michael Cohen, is the guy who gave the money to this porn star for yeah. Donald Trump. And he's being investigated by the FBI and by the, a lot of people right now. It's a whole big thing that's very complicated. We're not going to get into it on an MMA yeah, show. This is getting to Fedor. This is scary now. Yes. Okay. Well, this guy, Michael Cohen, <laughs> was the COO, which is the, uh, damn it, something officer. Chief. Chief. Chief operating, Chief operating officer. officer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Muscles Marco with the help out there. Uh, Chief Operating Officer of Affliction Fighting. Oh, okay. So Fedor, of course, was uh, the headliner for Affliction and was paid very much by Affliction. Maybe a little too much. One of the reasons why they went under. But apparently Donald Trump was also an investor in Affliction. Well, yeah, which makes sense. Okay. He's a, like he owns so, casinos. this guy Michael Cohen... Is being investigated about, I guess, I guess about his ties to Trump and maybe to Russia, and they're trying. They're also investigating Trump's ties to Russia at the same time, right? There's a whole Russia investigation going on. Okay, All right. so this is happening at the same time. So Fedor, you know, in involved in Russian MMA, he's the president of the Russian MMA Federation, appointed by Vladimir Putin. Putin's been at many fights of Fedor's. A very good judo guy, too. Yeah, Putin is. And you can do a, a very go- a very easy Google image search for Fedor, Donald Trump, Putin. Just oh, yeah, I'm going to do, do that. it right now. Just do that, and look how many pictures there are. There aren't pictures of Fedor with Trump and Putin at the same time, but there are pictures of Fedor with Trump and pictures of Fedor with Putin. Holy smokes, you're right. Okay. I see it. Though. There's a okay. lot of yeah. Putin is tight with Fedor, <laughs> and and you know so there's a possible link there. So last week, while Fedor was in the United States, the FBI took it upon themselves to talk to Fedor and uh, and see maybe if he had anything to do with whatever. We don't know what exactly they talked to Fedor about. All that we know is that he did meet with the FBI a few times, and uh, some FBI agents even attended. The fight where he knocked out Frank Mir <laughs> last Saturday. I would so, love to. So Fedor is that. basically continuing his career so he could spy on the U.S. for Vladimir. That's what it is. Okay. Like, what the heck does that have to do with the porn star? Allegedly, now? I don't know. Allegedly, well, because Was this it guy like fight Mike, of the night prize because or what? this guy Michael Cohen is is somebody that you may know because he's being investigated for the money that he paid her, and he was also the COO of Affliction, and he was his link to Donald Trump and the Affliction okay. promotion. He was the link between Fedor and Donald Trump. So he's being investigated, so they talk to Fedor. I just want to say about the picture thing. I mean, Fedor is one of the biggest star in Russia, so him having pictures with Vladimir Putin, 
nothing like surprising there as far exactly. as I'm concerned. No. It's like Fedor having pictures with Donald Trump, nothing surprising because Donald Trump invested in affliction. So as far as I'm concerned, maybe there's something, but I, I'm not going to jump to conclusion Well, on do this. me a favor and do a Google image search for Habib Nurmagomedov and Vladimir Putin. Really? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, look. Okay. Uh, do me people, a favor, because honestly, do, I don't think... Do I don't Denis think, Kadair and a bunch of, uh, you know, I mean, no, like, no, but politicians what like to hang Donald out. Trump. Politicians oh, like to hang out with... People That's that not will what get I'm saying. Them votes. What I'm saying is there are no pictures. There, you're right. There are no pictures of Habib and Putin. Conspiracy. But there are many pictures of Fedor and Putin at different events. I'm saying that there is a link. You're freaking me out, Dave. There is a link between Fedor and Vladimir Putin. You're right. Man. Similar, possibly, to the link between Habib Nurmagomedov and Ramzan Kadyrov, mm-hmm. who is the head of the Chechen Republic. Man, are you you're well versed, my friend. I'm not a dumb guy. No, you're not. I Dave follow Simon, these things. Yeah, man. These I'm, things are I'm impressed, important. man. Wow. Okay. Please do not ask Habib Nurmagomedov his thoughts on gay marriage. Okay? Mm-hmm. I've said that before. Okay, it's getting crazy now. Yeah, look look that up. Habib Nurmagomedov and gay marriage. Okay. Do a quick search for that and then and then see if you want this guy as your uh, UFC champion or a big star in the UFC. So I don't know if there's anything out there as far as Habib and gay marriage, but nobody asks them because... Uh, Why don't you do that, man? <clears throat> should call him up and I don't like, want to get killed. Why? Come on, Habib David, Nurmagomedov. Fun. Who Who are we talking about here? Do you? Okay, okay. you know what? We're going to take a short pause here because Anthony needs to be informed on a couple things, and I'm going to help you guys out <laughs> a little bit. You know, Ramzan Kadyrov, do a quick Google Google search on that guy. And then him and Habib, there's a whole story there that we could get into, but it is deep. It's deep, it's scary, and it's real. This guy, Ramzan Kadyrov, he's not a man to play with. And him and Habib seem to be pretty tight. And Fedor and Putin seem to be pretty tight. And uh, that's why the FBI was talking to Fedor Emelianenko last week. Maybe not about Putin. Maybe about Michael Cohen. Maybe about Donald Trump. Maybe Fedor had an affair with Stormy Daniels. What? Say what? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it's a joke. crazy, man. That's a joke, What is Anthony. it, Tito Ortiz like, doing the video or what? Holy smokes. It's Ringside Report Radio. We're live on TSN 690. Nick Diaz and Nate Diaz, the Diaz brothers, are maybe coming back to the UFC. Who do we want to see them fight? Send us your thoughts. On Twitter at Dave Simon MMA at Freddie MMA at Dan E Brook, and you can also give us a call if you want to. Right, we got Muscles Marco handling the phones. We don't often give out the number 514-790-1690. 514-790-1690. We are live here on TSN six ninety. You want to give us a call? You want to talk about Fedor and his ties to the government? You want to talk about? The Diaz brothers. Who do you want to see the Diaz brothers fight? Will they ever fight again? 514-790-1690. We'll take your calls. Anthony is here. Fred is here. I'm Dave. I'm also here. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. It is Ringside Report Radio. I am Dave Simon, Fred Garcia, and Anthony D'Alessio here with me, here with you every Friday night talking mixed martial arts. I think I just blew Anthony's mind with all that uh, Russia yeah. talk with Fedor and the FBI and Freaking me Habib out. Nurmagomedov and Ramzan Kadyrov. You don't know about this stuff, eh? You just stick to the fights. Man. You just stick to the nuts and bolts of the grappling and the so on, but you got to know about... The business of MMA as well. That's uh, well. That's a that's, that it's an interesting business. business. Like, yeah, it is a business, but it's there's but so this, many weird ties, man. This guy Kadyrov, who uh, is a pretty nasty fellow, he's got pictures uh, of himself hanging out with uh, all sorts of MMA stars. It's not just Habib, you know. Frank Mir, Fabrizio Verdum, uh, Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. He's with uh, all sorts of different people. This Kadyrov fellow, and he's a big fan of Vladimir Putin. Big fan. 
John Oliver did a really good bit on him showing how many different Vladimir Putin t-shirts he owns and wears. Puts out on his Instagram. It's pretty cool. He's got a vast collection of Vladimir Putin t-shirts. It's a funny bit. Uh, All right, but we're not talking about that guy right now. We're talking mixed martial arts. We're going to get back to the business. There's been talk about the Diaz brothers. There's been talk about Nate Diaz potentially coming back. He said he wanted to come back in May or June. That seems like it's not happening right now, but... Maybe he'll come back in August. There's the latest rumor that Nate Diaz may be fighting August 4th at UFC 227 in Los Angeles. Kevin Lee coming off a big win in the UFC. He says he wants to fight. Is that the fight you want to see for Nate's return? I don't know about that. I I don't feel like that's a big money fight that will A, draw Nate out of his semi-retirement, and B... I don't know if that's the big fight that you really want to see for Nate Diaz at this point, who is coming off his last two fights against Conor McGregor. You're going to fight Conor McGregor twice and then come back to fight Kevin Lee? I mean, no disrespect to Kevin Lee, but, I mean, is he really at the level of a Nate Diaz right now as far as, like, a a high-level main event type player? Yeah, but... Are we talking skills here or just like... No, I'm not talking skills. No. Of course, skill-wise, no. skill wise, the fight makes sense. Kevin Lee's one of the top lightweights in the world. Nate Diaz, when he was active, one of the top lightweights in the world. I have no reason to believe he still wouldn't be. But, I, you know, it's a good fight, but I don't know if it's a I big fight, you know? I'll tell you what the real question is. The real question is, does Nick Nate Diaz want to fight? And does he need to fight? Because, I mean, if he still has money in the bank, this fight doesn't make sense unless he really wants to come back. If he needs to make some more money, hey, you're you're taking whatever's there maybe. But I don't know. Kevin Lee's not the biggest money fight I, I could think of. So yeah, Nate but, Diaz yeah, is exactly. 33 years old. He hasn't fought in two years. It'll be two years in August. His last fight was in August 2016. When he lost the decision to Conor McGregor. Right. At a certain point, you got to come back. Or we got to consider him done. Like, And and if you're Nate Diaz, you got to start thinking, man, I have to come back. I don't know if he needs to come back financially, but if he's going to continue a pro MMA career, at a certain point, he's going to have to pick a fight and return. But... Dana White is saying that the UFC's offered Nate Diaz fights every few months, and he exactly. keeps turning them down. Is that so trilogy happening with McGregor? Because that might be the well, only thing that, you know, like if you got a $10, 15000000 million payday fighting McGregor, hey, maybe you're you're still able to, you know, to wait another year or two. And I think that's exactly but what Nate happening? Diaz is doing. I think he's been waiting for Conor McGregor, but at a certain point, the waiting game... It's just too long. You're right. waiting too long. You can't play it forever. You got to pick somebody. Now, you can wait around for that $15 million payday that may or may not ever come, or you could go back and get two, three, four, maybe five million against the right opponent. But it's got to be worth his while. And I don't feel that Kevin Lee is really worth his while. Now, at the same time, Eddie Alvarez says he doesn't want to fight for the UFC until he gets a new contract. Okay. So he's holding out. He's got one fight left on his deal, but he doesn't want to to, to sign a bout agreement against anybody until he gets a, a new contract with the UFC. He doesn't want to fight and then have to deal with a contract. He wants to get that deal before he fights. I like Eddie Alvarez versus Nate Diaz. Yeah. I don't That's know. the fight yeah. I want to see. As far as as big name fighters in the lightweight division, there aren't that many guys to choose from for Nate. And and if you're looking at recognizable talent, Eddie Alvarez is one of those guys. And yeah. I'm sure Eddie would be real happy with that big money fight against Nate. I think the fans would be real happy because the fight would be incredible. 
And I think Nate would be happy because Eddie Alvarez is one of those real guys who's been around for a while, who's paid his dues, who's a big name in the sport. He's been a champion in the UFC and in Bellator, which is something that, you know, Kevin Lee or some guy like that can't really say. Now, you know, maybe Nate wants Habib or maybe Nate sounds interesting. Maybe Nate wants Tony Ferguson, you know, Mm. instead of Connor. Maybe he wants that to stay in the title mix. But I, I think he wants Habib. I don't know if I don't exactly. I'm with you. I don't think he wants Habib. Yeah, but that's he where might the money's going to be. He right? might want to fight Tony Ferguson, though. I don't know. But uh, honestly, I think that the the best option right now is Eddie Alvarez. Yeah, Eddie also fought Conor McGregor in his last MMA yeah. fight, so there's the Conor tie-in as well. I think Eddie and Nate Diaz right now make sense, and if I'm Nate, that's the fight I'm pushing for. I'm not pushing to fight Tony Ferguson or Habib on my first fight back after two years away from the sport. Yeah, it's but, not smart. Yeah, but it's Diaz not likes smart to fight one of those guys. Yeah, but Diaz likes the, the hype. The hype is going to be there with, with Eddie Alvarez, Alvarez not really. just as much as it is with Habib or Tony Ferguson. You know what? I, well, maybe I not Habib, but with Tony Ferguson. I think that the hype against for Nate Diaz and the money is the same. <clears throat> Ferguson or Alvarez, either or. Well, it's going to be a good test to see Nate Diaz drawing power because he became a big star after those McGregor fights. But mm. look, you could, you know, this is 2018. There's a lot of things happening. Is Nate Diaz still a big star? I, I hope so. We I think lo- so. He we're, is, but we're if he still holds in out the McGregor longer. era, right? We're still in that era. We're still in the era where Conor McGregor is the biggest thing in the sport, and anybody attached to him is a big deal because of that. So unless he's fighting McGregor, we agree that Nate Diaz is the draw, whether he's fighting Eddie Alvarez or whoever. Yeah, So Eddie Alvarez makes sense in a style-wise. I think Habib's a tough matchup for for Nate. You know, maybe stay away. But you can get more hype. two years off, right? Yeah, exactly. Stay away from that. If not, hey, Justin Gagey, there, there's some names out How about there, but Dustin I like Poitier. the Eddie Alvarez. Dustin Poitier sounds like a much better fight, in my opinion. Poitier's for Diaz. been out there. Decent Poitier. fight you know, also. Yeah, it'll be like, I don't know, it's just like uh, Diaz needs that hype fight, and it's not going to happen with Eddie Alvarez. You're not going to have like you think Dustin many Poitier? more pay-per-views sold because of like Eddie Alvarez against Diaz. Hang Diaz on, against hang McGregor. On. No, 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 stop. Do you think Dustin Poirier is a bigger name than Eddie Alvarez? I think he's a more exciting on, fighter. Man. I think he's more exciting. Yeah, he might be. Whoa, that's but not people want excitement. Up, Diaz wants excitement. He wants money. He, no, no, money. No, no. He wants a big money fight. Do you think Dustin Poirier is a bigger money fighter than Eddie Alvarez? That I'm is not ridiculous. asking you, you who wants, do you prefer. No, I, I know on, what Diaz man. wants. Diaz wants McGregor, man. He wants a. He wants. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, have yeah. much time left. He's not getting McGregor though. You're not answering the question. Get to the point. No. I, I, I like Dustin Poirier, and I think it'll be a much more exciting fight. That's my opinion. Did he answer the question, Fred? Well, he stayed with, he stayed with his opinion that exactly. he prefers Dustin Poirier. Which, which is look. wrong because Dustin Poirier has never been a champion in the UFC, unlike Eddie yeah, Alvarez. But to come back. He's never headlined a pay-per-view, unlike Eddie Alvarez. Come on now. He's moving up, man. I just like him, has and Dustin, I think it'll be a better has fight. Has Dustin Poirier ever headlined a pay-per-view? Not yet. No. But it's going to happen soon. Mm-hmm. Well, he wanted to fight Eddie Alvarez, but Eddie's saying, you know, I'm waiting it, this one out. Poirier's coming off wins over Pettis and Gaethje. They they want to fight again. Uh, I know the UFC was trying to make that fight, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Poirier, he wants Habib. I say give it to him. Give Poirier Habib. Exactly. Let's do that. Go for it. I agree with you. Not Eddie Alvarez, though. Give Eddie Alvarez to Nate Diaz or to Tony Ferguson. Mm. Tony Ferguson would be that fine, That would be too. a good fight. Eddie Alvarez, Tony Ferguson? That'd be sick. Like, even Diaz Ferguson will be sick. Yeah, of course. You know, that'll, that makes more sense to me. Ferguson needs a fight. He needs to come back. That'll yeah, be a good I money think fight Ferguson's from... still off for a couple of months. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. he's take... still hurt with a knee injury, yeah. A, so he wouldn't be ready for August, okay? And B, I don't really want to see Nate Diaz come back after a two-year layoff and fight a guy to the level of Tony Ferguson. I don't want it. I want a high level, but not the highest level right away because, you know, it's two years off. You don't know what he's going to be like. You want to, I mean, Eddie Alvarez is not an easy comeback fight by any means. But Tony Ferguson, I don't know, man. Tony Ferguson's been on such a tear. I want to see Tony Ferguson fight Connor or Habib. How about Diaz against George? Nate? Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, Diaz, yeah. Against, nah. Come on. How about Nick? 
That could be interesting, too. There's been rumblings that Nick wants to come back. Could we see Nick and George fight one more time? Maybe. I'm into it. I'm into it. Who's not into that? I'll believe it when it happens because, I mean, there's too much things like George is semi-active. Nick is pretty much retired. Like, a lot of things need to fall in place. If if Nick is to come back, who do you want to see him fight? Woodley? He'll get crushed. Woody? Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler. That'd be nice. That'll be good. That's nice. Yeah, that's a good one. How about Carlos Condit? Yeah, maybe as his last fight, sure. That's a good one because but I think it would be similar to the first fight, and then we'll have know. again more of a Nick Diaz know. complaining about. I don't know if it would be man Condit. These days does not look like doesn't he's look the good. same. No, yeah, well, I guy mean, Nick doesn't it, look the he's same because he's not active. Well, we haven't seen Nick Diaz in even longer than his brother, right? Nick hasn't fought since what 2015. Anderson yeah. Silva. Anderson Silva in January 2015. It's incredible Whew, time flies. But that's what it's, yeah, it's nuts. But that's why. How much longer it's can terrible. you stay out of the game before people are going to forget you? He's, he's only, got maybe two years left. He's only Max. 30, he's only thirty-four years old. Yeah, but like you're getting to you know, 36, I hope, 37 I hope the Diaz years brothers don't regret the the paydays that they lost because I mean, th- you got these, to these were For their sure. prime years. They could have had at least four or five extra fight each. You know, big. This money is fight. their pri- Nick Diaz sat out his prime. Yep, yep. You're right. It's sad. Puffing away. We're talking about what twenty million? Like seriously, a couple, yeah. like if several well, yeah, with million the endorsements and Nick all the Diaz rest. Sticks for sure. around, my goodness. Several million a fight for for Nick Diaz. Seriously, it's it's crazy that Nick Diaz has gone since 2015, and now he's 34 years old. So three years later, so, you know, he's 31 when he stopped fighting. That's his prime, man. 31, 32, 33. Nate hasn't fought since he's 31 either. What is it with the Diaz brothers? They turn 31, they're like, that's it. That's it, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> it's pretty sweet, though. Sit on the porch. Hey, man, if you could away. retire at 31, why not? Yeah, but I don't even think they're thinking Do about jiu-jitsu, retirement. Do jujitsu, smoke weed all day. That's exactly that's what That's the Diaz doing. brothers' lifestyle. They seem to be enjoying Maybe it. Maybe they don't like, give a crap about not? anything. That's the thing. I don't know. They're too whacked out to think. They're too whacked out. How dare you? Whacked. They would smash you around if they of heard course. you saying that. I like them. I like the Diaz brothers. Oh, now he, now he likes sure, them. Man. I love the Diaz brothers. I think they're fantastic. I but we need to see fight. more of them. And I feel like I've been talking about these guys for years, wondering when they're going to come back. Get them on the show or something. Let's oh. ask them that question. We've, think, we've tried. Let's do it again, man. Try no. Try harder. Not, they, not they can easy. do it, Dave. Just not do it. Like does a says. lot of interviews. Just do it. Come on. Yeah, when's they the could last time it. you saw Nick Diaz interview? Get him a bag of weed or something, and like they'll come to the show. Aren't, aren't you the guy that gets us interviews? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know what? You Let think me, Nick you know Diaz what? can't get I'm his gonna own get, weed? I'm, I'm going to get on the horn. Your job? Listen, I'm going to get on the horn and try to get the Diaz brothers. Good luck. I'm going to try, guys. Thanks. I'm really going to try. Yeah. He'll sign. He'll set it <laughs> he'll up. get arrested or and something. And then no, they won't call. <laughs> you know? I know how it is. I've been there before. I've been really? down that road. Did they do that? Maybe. Hmm. I had to talk to somebody named, uh, well, I'm not going to say her name. We're not going to get into that story. It was a whole long story trying to get Nate Diaz on the show one time. I'm not even going to get into it. I'm curious now. I want to know, man. Nah, it's, it's not that big of a story. It's okay. It's okay. So uh, so you guys want to see Nate Diaz come back? Obviously. For Nate sure. Diaz come back? Obviously. And Poye go up against Habib? Is that the next fight for Habib? Are we just forgetting about Conor McGregor now? Have we just ignored him and he's no longer part of the equation? He's going to be there. He's he's training. He looked great, man. I mean, he's there's something going on. We just don't know what's happening. There's something going to happen. Well, mind you, yeah, he is arrested. <laughs> there's something going on. <laughs> yeah. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it is. But I have a feeling before the end of the year, we're going to hear McGregor's name. There's going to be a fight. There's going to be a fight. He's going to want to fill up his bank account back. I mean... These lawyers, his, it costs li- money, his man. lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. He needs a couple 10, 15, 20 million extra. Well, it's not happening right now, right? I mean, we're sitting here. It's May. Yeah. We're in the month of May. We have no McGregor fights announced. I guess next month is when he has to get the whole legal thing done Sorted with. Out. Yeah. It's, it's in June where his whole hearing is going to take place and it'll all wrap up, hopefully, and then he can move on and. And maybe that's Put a what's fight together. Happen. Maybe right. that's what we're waiting. Yeah, we're for. gonna get all that hype. He's gonna get like, he's gonna get off of those charges. Do community work. Who knows what the heck he's gonna do? But 
that'll give a like a, a really good boost for a fight for him. And and if Khabib is still around, that'll be the fight to watch. And I think he'll beat him. I don't think I really think Khabib like honestly I don't his think... last fight with uh, with Al was like not impressive. Look, it, his stand up game was like really weak. You thought who who's gonna beat him? Connor's gonna beat Habib? For sure. Yeah, I agree. I think Connor beats Habib, but I don't think Connor's gonna be Habib's next fight. Well I think Habib is gonna fight somebody else before he fights Connor. He may fight Connor one day, but I think Habib is gonna wind up fighting somebody before Connor. It may very well be Dustin Poirier. Which would be a nice fight, too. And I think, you know, Poirier is like, he's impressed me from the beginning of his career. This guy, like, really works hard. He's he's one of the, for myself, one of the most fascinating fighters out there. I, I've seen his career grow from a nothing, like, literally, like, living in his car to to being ranked number five now. And he's moving up. His, his fights have been, like, really impressive. And I think his stand-up game could be, like, a real threat to Khabib. Yeah, maybe. You know what? But that could I, be I a surprise there. I don't think it's going to be tough enough like, were to you put really, Habib down. Were I, you like, really Poirier, that impressed with his last fight? Let's be honest. No, no, no. But it, listen, Poirier doesn't have the knockout ability that Conor McGregor does. He doesn't have that one-punch right. ability to put a guy down. And that's what you need with Habib because if you don't put him down, if you don't hurt him, he's going to keep coming after you. And we've seen that time and time again. He'll eat those shots to grab a hold of you and get the takedown. And I don't think Poye is going to be able to stop that takedown. I don't think he, he can do it because Habib's takedown is just superior to anybody yeah, else. Yeah, but you still got to finish. When you're on the ground, the takedown is... is and I'll tell you what is... Yeah, but he can up. keep taking you down over For and over sure. again. Habib's last fight was disappointing. It, it makes you like think a little bit. Like maybe we're seeing him a little bit bigger than he is. Yes, I would pick him against Poirier, but I'm not. I'm not going to stay here and uh, say Poirier like, has zero chance. You know, Poirier exactly. is a good fighter. He's 29. He's in his prime. He takes a, his craft very seriously. But I still pick Habib, and he has a great <laughs> ground game as well, right? So yeah, decent ground game. Yeah. Like yeah, he's a good. He's look, overall, is a good he's, fight. Yep, he's a top fighter in the division. There's no doubt about it. And he's exciting. That's the thing. Uh, we'll see. You're a big Dustin Poirier fan. Over I there. am. I really. He really impressed me from the beginning of his career to where he is today. He's very good, but I think Habib is going to be a lot of trouble for him. Remember when Connor destroyed him? Do you remember that yeah. fight? Connor smashed him. Minute forty six seconds. I think. I, you know, a lot of people don't like, in my opinion, respect Connor as much as they should respect Connor. And yeah, he's fantastic. Like, he's, he's like amazing. Like, it would be cool if he fought more often, though, right? It would be fun if he was more involved in the UFC. Yeah, well, he's a lot of guys busted, in the UFC the these days are just not involved. Like, so many champions are just not in the picture. Champions Where- are big name, you know, like. Dana probably says to himself, imagine if John Jones, yeah. Conor McGregor, Nick and Nate, George, Ronda. Like, if all these people were still here, the sport would have kept growing so much. But it feels like in, in the last couple of years, there hasn't been this growth. Yeah, there's like a fizz. I, I agree because with you. There's a UFC pay-per-view next weekend. You guys excited? I am. I'm excited. Uh, I mean, like, on. excited, like, you know, I'm excited for sure. No, you're not. You don't want to see Amanda? You don't Fred, see... hey? are you excited? Jacare, come on. No. Nah. Yeah, me neither. Belfour, I'm, Machida, come on. Look, they're good fights, but it's not anything where I'm like, I I'll cannot watch. wait for this. The only fight that has taken place on the UFC calendar that I'm aware of that I cannot wait for is DC and Stipe. That is the only fight I want to see this summer. I don't care about anything else. Like, obviously, I'm going to watch, but the one fight that I'm like, wow, this is going to be something is DC and Stipe. And that's good. Right. It's a heavyweight champion against a light heavyweight champion. This is all the eggs in one basket. It's a big old fight. But this is a nice card, too. The, you know, it's May a 12th good is card, gonna... but you're not freaking out over the main event. You're like, oh, my God. Like, when it comes time for Amanda Nunez or Cal Pennington, yeah, I'll it's... have seen what I want to see already. The main event is not really the main event of the yeah, show. it's not a great season. I want to see agree. Jacques Array. Against Gastelum, and I want to see Machida against Vitor. And then I'll watch Ryan Bader and King Mo at Bellator. Uh, at you got to give some love to Amanda. She's been a great champion. She's beating a lot of people. 
Like she's making her mark. Has she been a great champion? Yes, she has. Yeah, but she doesn't have that rousy appeal. That's the problem. That's what people want, right? But she's she a doesn't great have fighter. it. And you know what? Like the more I keep hearing rousy, in the I don't news, think she's been a great champion. I'm going to contest that. What Amanda? Yeah, she's not been a great champion. In what way? I mean, okay, she beat Misha Tate to win the title. Then she beat Ronda Rousey, and then she two beat, future Hall of Famers. Then she beat Valentina Shevchenko by split decision. Like that's all she she hasn't done that she, much. She defeated two future Hall of Famers, Misha yeah, and Ronda. Yeah, yeah, True, yeah. dominated them, and then didn't uh, dominate Valentina Shevchenko. It happens, man. Come on, yeah, everybody does. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I everybody think you, doesn't. You can't have a say perfect she's fight. been a great champion. She's been, you know, the champion. We'll see if she retains in her next fight. She probably will. There's not a ton of competition right now, though, at 135. She should, she she should go back. up and fight Cyborg. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But she'll Let's probably go. get beat up, you know? Is that really good for her career, go up Maybe and that'll happen after this fight, Fred. They were talking about it for so long. This might be what's going to happen after. It should. It we, should. Yeah. Amanda Nunez's next fight should be against Cyborg. You beat Cyborg, then you're a great champion. Then you're a legend. But they need that big, big fight. They yeah. need that. Cormier, you know, Stipe is going to be a big name fight, but but they need more. The UFC need more. needs Max more. Max Holloway, Ortega, but there's too many fighters. Whitaker that and uh, uh, Yoel. Those are big fights, man. Don't laugh. Those aren't. Yeah. Those aren't big fights where the guys are going on the Tonight Show to promote it. It's not like a big mainstream fight. It's not DC and Stipe. That's a big fight. Yeah, but I mean, even Stipe, he did, like I said it last time, he doesn't have the biggest personality. Look, DC I love does. Him. DC does. Yeah, but we'll see how you know. Like DC probably sells good. I'll admit he's a good, charismatic fighter. Now. Yeah, but DC, you know, when the UFC is relying on DC to be one of their top sellers, you know, yeah, it's not. They're, it's they're not lacking. like Brock Lesnar being have, there and exactly. all that. Exactly, he's know? not Brock Lesnar. Yeah. So. And how many fights does he have left? I mean, he's over forty. I also, think this will so. be his last fight. If he wins, he's probably going to take his retirement. I so, think what do you so. do from there? Stipe you challenge there. Brock Lesnar. If if you're DC, you beat Stipe and you take the mic and you say, "I'm only fighting Brock Lesnar." You want mm. you want this title? I'm fighting Brock. Guys, yeah, I got that's bad, a money fight. I got bad news for you. What? What happened? Brock is. St- Still, the WWE Universal <laughs> Champion, which means he, he's going nowhere. He's supposed to lose it at Money in the Bank. Come on. He's losing it at Money in the Bank? I think so. So what happens? Is he even going to wrestle Money in the Bank? I, I read that about that. Oh, by the way, I wanted Ooh. to ask you, was yes. Rousey at the, uh, the show on Monday? I saw Ronda Rousey on Monday night at the Bell Center. No way. Yes, I did. Wow. She did nothing. She came out with Natalia Neidhart. Uh, she stood... Outside the ring, and then Alexa Bliss was like getting involved, and Ronda chased her around the ring a couple times, and that was it. That's that's all Ronda did. Cool. But I saw Ronda. That's awesome. Man. I saw her. How are the first rumblings of uh, her backstage? Are people rest- like her? Yeah, yeah. She had a really good performance at WrestleMania. She's super respectful of all the other wrestlers. What about when she's going to be asked to take a fall? To lose, yeah, or to take some bumps, <laughs> also. But I mean, either way, you know, you she's got, not gonna like that. She's right? gonna have to lay down at some point for Queen Charlotte or something. Yeah, I think she'll do it because she understands that's part of the business. If you're not willing to lose in the wrestling Does business, she, she doesn't she, like to lose. She doesn't. She like left to the lose. UFC she because doesn't she doesn't like, like to lose in real fights. So imagine in those where she could say, "No, I don't want to fight the fight. I lose." If you're really, you're right. If you're doing that as a professional wrestler, you need to get out of the business immediately. But she's not really a professional. Like she is a professional wrestler, but she's like, look, she's I not think... going to be asked to lose very often. Okay, guys, it's not going to happen a lot, but it it will happen eventually. And I'm sure when the time is right, she'll agree to it because it will make sense. It'll probably be. I want to see Rousey back, man. That's what I want to see, and I think it's gonna happen. Rousey back in the UFC? Yeah, it's gonna happen. I, Why? I have this feeling, this gut feeling, all this week with oh, Misha Tate like crazy. trashing Rousey, like you know, you, what? And all this. Did you see that whole like trash? Why is Misha Tate talking? Because she's not relevant, and Ronda still is. She's she mad? No, she's just upset about yeah, because she's Ronda mad. because Ronda said that. Hearing her talk is a privilege, and exactly. Misha said that it's pretty idiotic to say, which I kind of agree with. Misha, I mean, if you want to 
promote your brand and all that. Like at some point, Rhonda, she just went into reclusion where it just got weird. You got to respect your fans, right? You can't talk trash. Like I mean, that. you got to be stable mentally. True. Fred, you come on this show every week. Is hearing you speak not a privilege? True. Good not, point. not at the rate I'm getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> Does it feel like a privilege? We, we're all privileged to hear you, Fred. We are all privileged to hear the wise words of Fred Garcia every Friday night. Here, here. And Anthony's here as well. Thank you very much. I didn't say anything I know. positive I know. about That's that. That's all right, because you know I'm right all the time, right? In my picks. Uh, not according Except to last uh, week. Yeah. yeah so a, disappointing. I don't know. I we know. played we played yeah. the audio, I Anthony, and you, you were wrong. you guys that. It's, it's so incredible what you guys do. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, how long did that take you to do all that? Incredible. Not long. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ringside Report Radio, and we are out of time here. I'll be back tomorrow night for Wrestling Uncensored. Myself and Johnny North talking professional wrestling. WWE Backlash goes down this Sunday. Yeah, we had the greatest Royal Rumble last weekend, and we got Backlash on Sunday. The pro wrestling never stops. Anthony, are you excited for Backlash? Where are you? Let me put my mic back on. I thought we yeah. were over. No, no, you're not <laughs> I saw Fred all chilled out there. I'm like, Fred's show's done. over. Dave's talking. Who's he talking about? Football again? Wrestling. Oh, wrestling. Oh, yeah. All right. Backlash. Uh, <laughs> Backlash is Sunday. <laughs> No, you're done, Anthony. You're done. Let me Backlash is Sunday. I'll be on tomorrow night at midnight with Johnny North talking professional wrestling, best in the WWE, a little New Japan pro wrestling as well. Dontaku went down. Naito is the new intercontinental champion in New Japan. What do you want? The live podcast next week. We'll talk about that next Friday. All right. We have some surprises in store for you. You may get more of Anthony, which is, I know, what you all want, right? Oh, my goodness. They want it, man. Give it to them. The Anthony Nation is alive. (laughs) Anthony's Power Nation. Toronto, Vancouver, Ireland, UK, trois Rivières. What more do you want? Follow Anthony on Twitter at Dan E. Brooke. Follow Fred at Freddie MMA. You can follow me at Dave Simon MMA. RingsideReport.net is our website. All the episodes available at RingsideReport.net. We got a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash RingsideReport.net. We're on iTunes. We're on Google Play. We're everywhere. Get all the info on our website, RingsideReport.net. This show, every show, at RingsideReport.net. For Anthony and Fred, I am Dave Simon, and this has been Ringside Report Radio. Thank you.